All right. So before we start the presentation, uh, this will be like a dynamic presentation. I'm gonna show some concepts for you, uh, and then we gotta dig into the coding itself. The idea here is to uh, give you like an idea about behavior-driven development, behead itself. How can you uh, set up your force package and start to automate your tasks like today if you want? Uh, everything that I'm gonna present on these slides can be used in can be used as real case. Uh, and what like bothers me most in this kind of presentation is that they show a lot of things for you, but when you try to do something at home, you cannot do it. So as this is a beginner to intermediate, so I will give you a setup and you you can use it after that. Um, first thing first, so my name is Luis, uh, I'm system architect from CINT. CNT is a global digital solution company uh, spread around the globe. Like we work with different technologies like Drupal, PHP, Java, Google. I have been working mostly uh, in the last three, four years with PHP, Drupal, Java, Hybris, Behat, MySQL, but I have experience also with other technologies. Um, with Drupal uh, itself, I have more than five years of experience working with six, seven, and, and eight. Uh, I have been working mostly with open source and I'm glad that I, I have opportunity to work in my company with more than 150 uh, Drupal years. So we have a large team spread in China, USA, Brazil. And of course, with the large team, we have a lot of projects and a lot of areas to, to dig into. Then I'm gonna show you how, how we came to be had in one of the requirements that we had. Um, okay, first, why automated tasks? So, Maybe some guys just can say, oh, I don't need that because I'm old school. Uh, I don't think so. Like, you must to, to use automated tasks. You must to. Actually, automation overall, it's, it's great. It's good. For tasks, it's really important for a development cycle process. I'm going to show real examples here. How, how can you gain just using one piece of, pro of, of this technology, but you can automate with different technologies, okay? Uh, basically, you can do a lot of things like do much more automation uh, with, with automation tasks. You can uh, vastly increase your, your testing coverage. So, uh, of course, compared with like developers writing the tasks and you automating everything, after that it's easy to, to redo everything. You, you increase vastly uh, your test coverage. You can avoid mistakes during manual testing as well. Uh, sometimes boring, uh, human uh, doing things like it's it's expected that eventually you're gonna do some mistakes. So it's more challenging and generate confidence for your QA team. That's a really good, uh, important piece of this this whole presentation. Uh, it's, it's I'm glad to see also how my QA team uh, dig into more testing coverage. Uh, they are more uh, confident because they are not doing the, the regular stuff. They have a, a new uh, area to dig into and, and, and contribute, which is the most important piece here. And that is a good and bad point, but in the end of the day, will be a good point. Like less human reserves. Not that I I, I have to fire my, my my employees. You can use them uh, in other areas. For instance, we have a large QA team, but we have different projects happening at the same time. And unfortunately, sometimes I I need three QA resources in one project, but I I don't have it. So. If I, I use the test automation, I'm, I'm gonna be able to automate whatever I want, reduce the number of resources, keep like the last QA team over there and keep moving on. And then I can use it in, in other the areas, of course. And most important thing, like save big money, guys. Like once created, automated tests can be run over and over again with no additional cost. So just move to test automation. Behavior-driven development, that's a, uh, one good thing and bad thing about IT, like you have new things happening all the time. Behavior-driven development is not that new, but uh, it's not used often like TDD, test-driven development. Um, and everything, a good piece to use behavior-driven development, it, it's to solve a, a usual problem that you have overall. Like you have different uh, roles, working on the definition, you have different ideas, a lot of miscommunication, the guy from design talking to the developers, uh, the managers, and uh, to use this kind of uh, development process can help you to see a new aspect of the development process. For instance, we work a lot with agents and they bring a lot of mock-up uh, screens to, to work on the initial concept, but sometimes it's different to developer to, to conceive what, what they will have to deliver for the QA team test. 
Using behavior-driven development, we can invert this process. Like the QA team can understand uh, the requirements, check the mockups, and start to write the tests. And these tests can, can be used or reuse it or improve it throughout the process, and you can have your, your QA team starting to work at the beginning, not in the middle of the process or in the end of the process. Okay? Uh, that's usually uh, what's happened during this process. Uh, probably you, you saw this image before. It's, it's famous during the uh, development cycle process. This is how it works usually, like how the customer explain it, how the project leader understood it, how the programmers wrote it, and <laughs> what a customer really needed. So a lot of miscommunication here, a lot of problems, and what I like most here, what a tester received at the end of the day. So you are, you are, so you are in, a, in a bad position when you are in this, in this situation. So uh, working with behavior-driven development, and, and I like it a lot about those two descriptions. Like it's example-based communication uh, and allow business and developers to clear communication and understand to each other. So behavior-driven development, it's conceived based on test-driven development, which is like write your test first and then start with the coding itself. But it's easy to be used because you you basically remove the, the coding, the logic behind the, the, the testing development and just use a more natural language, a language more accessible for internists, for QA team, and you don't have to be like a, a Java expert, for instance, or a PHP master on it, okay? How individual parts works here? Talking about uh, what we're gonna use, behatch uh, and, and the tools for behavior-driven development. We're gonna use, first, Gherkin, okay? Gherkin uh, will be used to define your behavior. So, uh, behatch uses Gherkin syntax, uh, and Gherkin basically gives you the ability to remove logic details from uh, behavior tests. As I told you, it's more easy to to, to be used. Gherkin uh, can be used also uh, as your project documentation. So in this case, it's really good because as long as you finish your tasks, you can just copy and paste and use as documentation. It's a good asset for you to deliver to the client and it's a real asset. So it's not nothing that was checked. It's what you're really using. Uh, and Behat is based on, on, on Gherkin syntax, okay? Uh, Gherkin structure used three main uh, items and that's what what we'll be using uh, with Behat, okay? Features, scenarios, and step. Features based, uh, it's one uh, feature that you want to test. I can set up, for instance, home page as a feature to, to be tested. And into features, you can have scenarios. And for each scenario, you can have several steps. So you can basically create your group of test files and, and features and just run through that. How Feature work, basic feature is, is your file. When you finish to set up Behat, feature uh, will be your file and the file that you, you're gonna use to, to validate everything. Uh, usually use this uh, this pattern, like the name of your test, for example, homepage dot feature. And one feature file can have one scenario or one feature file can have a lot of scenarios at the same time. You can have like uh, two features to test the main main item. So the idea here is to have one feature, for instance, for home page, and then have a lot of scenarios for that, and one feature for searching uh, mechanism, and a lot of features for that. You can have different features for, for different areas of searching, but basically that, that's the structure that we, we're gonna use. Um, as I told you, like you have the actions here. You have feature scenarios and steps, actually. Those are the steps. After you create your scenario, you're gonna use this pattern, and, and that's the pattern that you have to understand because you have been using that throughout the, the process to, to develop your test. So, you have given, when, then, and but. So, uh, given defines the initial state of your system for the scenario. After you define your scenario, you, you have to set up with given. When, it's basically when uh, a action taken by a person or, of, or role or something, and then you have then um, an action for that, and you can increase that using and and but. So basically, that, that is the stricter. One example here, like we could have a feature, call it read news in Portuguese. We're gonna give a name for the feature, like IATN, because we're gonna, we're gonna be testing local here. And then you have, in order to read news in Portuguese as a Brazilian user, I need to be able to switch locale. So that's the idea of um, behavior-driven development using Gherkin, and we're gonna use it on, on Behat. 
Here it's, it's mostly like an example of behead itself. It's not a real uh, action, but that, that's the sticker, okay? You have a feature, you can add like the, the comments for your feature over that. Doesn't matter how many lines you have, you can describe whatever you want. Uh, and then you're gonna start with scenario. After you set up scenario, then you're gonna have to just start your actions. You can add a description for the scenario. And then you can have uh, all the actions, like give and end, and end, then and end, and move on. Okay? This is a most readable uh, example. I have a feature, add new article, so description for that in order to manage the newsletter, blah, blah, blah. In this scenario, I want to add a content for news, okay? And that's, that's interesting. Oh, is this Drupal? Is this like regular HTML? Like, can be used for any language as long as you. You can create this interaction with between like behead and the browser. You can just identify the elements and just move on. Okay. Even I go to a specific URL. When I click new article and I fill the field title with my text title, the, the text my title. I'm sorry. And then I press the button save. Then I should see the answer, which will be a new content was added. This is a real scenario. Okay. This is like how Behat will, will give you the ability to create a, a feature and a test. Uh, okay, but how can, I, how can I see or identify uh, which one is available, which one I can use it? That's a good part. Like, you can start Behat from scratch and gives you just the uh, skeleton to build your coding, PHP coding behind the scenes, and then we'll mix with this uh, natural language. Uh, and you can use some extensions. Here we're gonna use Drupal extension that will give you by default a lot of ready functionalities to be used. And then you can just identify and start to, to code, okay? Start to automate your tests. Behat, okay. We talked about BDD, we talked about Gherkin, and now let's use uh, Behat. So before we start again, I'm not like Behat fanboy, like Behat's the best solution for everything. Uh, as I told, like my company is large, and we have several problems. Uh, for one of them, recently, not recently, like a year and a half ago, uh, we have to solve a problem quickly. We, we had to like use our QA team, and then we had to find uh, uh, the best technology to fit on the, that requirement. And we had just was uh, inserted and solved all of our problems. Uh, grew up the uh, our team. Uh, quality of, of, of the knowledge of our team and every, every, everyone was happy. And then after that, uh, we could create a framework, a, a huge framework using Behat, integrated with continuous integration and, and now it's starting to become like the full process for uh, automated tests in one piece of, of our company. So that's why we are we're using here. Behat, it's basically a behavior-driven development framework for PHP, okay? It's a tool that implementing a behavior-driven development a concept, just like Cucumber, for instance, and I, I, know, I don't know if you are aware about Cucumber, but something similar. Um, how Behat works, it's, it's basically, uh, he reads, uh, he maps each steps in a PHP callback. Those steps that we, uh, I just showed for you on BDD, Behat will read that and map with a PHP callback. And that's the catch for Behat. Like, you can set up and start to write your PHP callbacks, or you can use a, a specific extension that gives you a lot of ready to be used steps and you don't have to write anything in PHP. Um, requirements before we start a setup, okay? You have to have at least PHP 5.3. You can have these libraries installed and curl and be streaming an XML to use in this specific extensor that I'm gonna show, okay? For Behat, it's a little bit easier than that. Uh, Behat is a library, so we can easily install it using Composer. Um, are you aware about Composer? So, the one that doesn't know, like Composer, it's just a uh, uh, repository to, to install, easily install a lot of things related to PHP and other technologies. So, Composer is for, for PHP mostly, but uh, it's easy to, to, to install using Composer. That's, that's the tool that I'm gonna use here in the example. But you can just download Behat from, from Git repository, or get Behat, install it from other computer and, and use it. There are several ways to install Behat, okay? Uh, during this setup process, basically you have to do 
two steps. Actually, to be had, it's only one step. I'm gonna use two steps here be because uh, I can give you like a set of tools ready to be used with a lot of, of power. So first, uh, it's create your composer.json. Actually, I'm gonna create a composer.json and add what I need into, but you can just uh, set like composer require and like Drupal extension, Drupal slash Drupal extension is the same thing. But I'm gonna use this one, then you can see things happening here. So you're gonna create a specific folder, create the composer.json file, add these lines inside the composer.json. That's the extension that we're gonna use. Drupal, Drupal extension. We're using 3.0 here, uh, but the last one I think is 3.1. For Drupal weight, uh, you have to add Guzzo here if we're working with Drupal 7. Seven, this line is not necessary. And here we're just, just defining that uh, the binary, actually the behat uh, executable uh, will be into uh, this, this specific folder, okay? After that, you just have to set like composer space install and everything will happen for you. Second step, it's to create the behat.yaml file. Uh, this is most to define uh, how we're gonna link the Drupal extensor uh, and Mink, uh, okay, let's talk about Mink a little bit. So Mink is a contest uh, that has a lot of things ready for you, okay? Like events like clicking, filling form, uh, basically everything that you need to interact with the browser. In this case, as long as we install Drupal extension and set on the email that we're gonna use Mink here, everything is ready for you, okay? After just create like behat.yaml, we're gonna set up or initialize our behat. You go to bin slash behat and just set init. And after that, you can just go and bin slash behat slash dl. You're gonna see all the comments that are ready to be used here. So you have the glossary here, in two steps, everything just installed and ready to be used and you can start to write your tests. All right? All right, let's go to the good part, which is think, see the things happening in real time. Okay, nice with me, guys. That's the real deal. It was tested before, but you know how it goes. <laughs> All right, we already have here uh, our two files. Okay, uh, we had YAML and composer.json. Uh, can you see my screen? It's okay can for you? Can you increase the font size a little bit? Yes, I can. Oops. Is that okay for you? No. That's better. All right. All right, we have two files here. Um, I have it open as well here. The first file, as I told you, it's uh, the composer.json. I have that comments that I told you, like Drupal, Drupal extension, Guzzle for Drupal, six, Drupal 8. And I'm gonna just define my bin folder here. After that, just composer install. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Take a, just five seconds when I start to install the package. That's composer running. Okay. All right. That is that part of the presentation, which... All right. There's a good spam. So, all right. It's ready. So as you can see here, what the extension did was basically map everything that is required for that extension and start to download. So you're gonna have a lot of drivers here. Like you, you're gonna have the Drupal driver, you're gonna have things related to Symfony, uh, Mink is here as well, uh, things related to YAML and go on. Okay, Gherkin, it's part of the, the group that they will be using as well. After install, if you just list what you have, you'll see like, we're gonna have the bean folder here and it was created also a vendor folder, okay? Uh, the bean folder uh, basically it's when Behat is executed, vendor has the libraries that were just downloaded and will be used at a port, okay? If I just, second step, as I told you, let just create like behat.yaml here, 
with that definition. So you have future contests defined here. I'm gonna dig into future contests for you uh, in the next slides. You have also Drupal contests, mean contests, message and Drush contests. Those are more most related to uh, Drupal uh, drivers. Mink, as I told you, is the, uh, the settings, the, the, the library that will give you a lot of inter interactions with browser ready to be used. Uh, here we are defining some items related to the extensions that were uh, downloaded already. So, GOOT, we're going to use GOOT, Selenium, if we we want to use in this presentation, but it's set to be used. I'm, I'm setting here like uh, the website that we're going to interact with, uh, which is a Aqua free uh, cloud uh, installation for me, and some items related to Drupal extension. I won't use that as well, but just to show you how you're gonna set if you want to use Drupal extension uh, add-ons, for instance, selectors here. Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit more more about it. After you create your YAML, you go to bin slash behat and initialize your behat. Okay. Now we have uh, created the features folder and here's the area that you're gonna place your test, okay? So everything that you're gonna create on the feature, on Gherkin feature, you're gonna add into this folder. And then it was created also feature contest, which is the file that will allow you to extend if you want to improve your behead. So after that, let's just create a new file under feature. I'm gonna create a new feature that will test my home page, so I will call it home.feature. Let's edit home.feature. All right. So as I told you, first line that we're gonna have to do here, it's uh, feature, define my feature, like testing home page content as a user Okay, just add a quick description here. As a user, uh, I want to be able to test the homepage text or validate it, whatever you want. And then the second step after feature description is scenario. Let's create the first scenario. It's the home page title scenario. Okay, what I want to test here. That's my website. I want to test if my homepage has this welcome Drupal 8 um, set as expected so everything starts with given given I am on and then I I need to set uh, the place that I have that, that, that I'm, I'm working right now uh, as I told you we define it on YAML here our base URL so I don't need to set that I can just set directly facing that I'm at the home page which is slash I should see this specific test. Welcome to Drupal 8. So here's our first feature. Scenario's homepage. Given I'm on the slash, which is the homepage, I should see uh, welcome to Drupal 8. Let's run. How I run the test. Under Bing, you have your behat. So behat, oh, sorry. Bing slash behat. And that's it. Beam Behat will run all the feature files that are there. I have only one. Let's start. Oops. Beam Behat run. I should see. Then. Of course. Thank you. All right. All right. We have our Behat running here. So it runs the scenario homepage title and then the steps that was performed here, give them a homepage. Then I should see this specific test. So in the end, you're gonna have like one scenario, two steps, and what was did for that. Like I can just copy and paste and start to document that. One, one thing that is really interesting here, if you just pass through uh, items in front of the line, you'll be able to see which 
like functionality, uh, they are accessing in PHP functionality to perform and do this Gherkin translation. Here they're using mean context visit basically, and below you're gonna be using uh, mean context assertion page context test. So it's a function. If you want to recreate that, you can just check this functionality and recreate your own functionality. Okay. All right, but let's see. It's really working. Yes, we can try. Let's see. Welcome to Drupal 7. It's what I want to test for this website. And run again. Then we're going to have like two scenarios. Uh, one scenario with two steps. The first one was okay. The second one wasn't okay because the text was not there. So you're going to have the reports here and everything that you need from test automation. So basically you did test automation using Behat with two steps. Pretty easy. And you can use a lot of interaction with that. Okay, but how can I know which one is available for me with this setup? If you just said behat, oops, b slash behat minus dl, you'll see everything that is ready to be used here. Okay, and then you can just mix using Gherkin structure and and work on. For instance. As I told you, we are using Drupal extension. In this one, you have things related to Drupal. Like as an anonymous user, I would like to test something. If I'm not logged in, I would like to do something. And then you can have generic things like uh, given user, vocabularies. Uh, when I visit a specific path, can be used not only for Drupal, but for anything that can be defined in the browser, then you can do uh, a specific. Uh, come on with that. Okay, let's improve a little bit our test here. Now I'm testing Drupal 8. I would like to create a new scenario that will test footer. On footer given, I'm on this area again. Then I should see. Then I should see something. Let me see what I have here. All right, on the footer I have powered by Drupal. Oops. No, this one. That's the problem to work with a lot of players. Sorry. Just stop that. Okay. And then, and I should see another text. Also, contact link. Okay, give it up. And I am on this place. Even I am on this place, then I should see power by Drupal and contact items. Let's run it. All right, now you have two scenarios, validating both items, and that's it. You, you start to validate your entire website. Okay, but that's easy. Yeah, basically with this easy comments, like you, you can validate everything that must appear properly on your homepage, your content page, uh, footer, header, menus, and <laughs> like you can cover everything that should appear as content in your website with three steps, okay? Can I interact with the website? Yes, you can. Like, let's, let's do a simple search here. Um, Let's enter, create a new file and into the vendor. That's vendor slash, let's call it search dot feature. Then I will create a, oops. Touch. Adam. Touch. Search. All right. Let me just copy here everything that I have. Okay, feature testing homepage search. All right, as a user, I want to be able to perform search. All right, scenario. 
not search fail. It's the same thing. I'm gonna test the home page, give it give an amount the home page, then let's use a new one. Then I fill in specific field with specific content. Um okay, what's the trick here? You basically have to use any inspection tool to get the ID, and that's the important key about Behat, okay? Uh, when you are creating your elements, it's important that you have ID for each element. That is the easiest way to map uh, and interact with your items on the home page using uh, Mink, for instance. Sometimes you're gonna have to look for element. Then I'm, I'm gonna show you. You can just add a function to search a specific element, and this element can be under like different levels of div, and it will be will be difficult to to be found. So this is edit keys. When I fill in edit keys with uh, Lewis, probably doesn't have Lewis over here. Then all right. Oops. Must press button, then I press, and then I must map button as well. It's the same thing. Edit submit. All right, so give it I'm on the home page, then I fill uh, the field edit keys with Louis text, then I press edit submit button. I expect uh, that I should see something. Wait, is a typo and press. I'm sorry? Is it typo and press? Oops. Yeah, I should develop like a behead for behead. <laughs> All right. All right. Here it's interacting with my website. So, oops. Homepage title for the validation. Search feature. No, it's getting another one. All right, we probably didn't create here. Search from feature. I don't know, probably create any other place. Uh, I'll probably create a new folder on the on the main folder. No, that's okay. It's search that feature. Yeah, probably. This is on the home page. On the home folder probably. Alright, now I have my home and my search feature. Then if I run behead, I should have both feature files being tested. Alright, so I have both, then I fill in... Yeah, you were right. Alright, if you if you need to verify the comments here, just press behead the L and you can confirm that. It's just because I was doing yesterday, I thought that I I was. Alright, now it's doing. You you can see that there is a small delay here, uh, and this delay is because it's interacting uh, with the website. So here I tested like. Then I should see Louis. Really? Do I have Louis over there? Now I probably create my name here. Now let me create a more complex scenario for you in this website. All right. This is what I just developed today morning. Here I'm testing login validation. I'm doing the same thing, like give him a user login. I fill edit name with test, edit pass with test. 
and then I press edit submit then I should see unrecognized the username and password forgot your password message so I'm doing the same thing I'm interacting with the fields here and here in the second scenario blank fields uh, give my own user login uh, that this is the okay uh, okay login give me on the user login and let me just set admin here and set admin here then I press submit then I should see admin which is my my main user All right, it was interacted here. First, trying to log in without with the user test test, and then logging with admin admin. So what I did here was basically this process. So I access in this one. I access this one. Uh, I try to log in with test test, and after that, I receive the unrecognized user message like saying that I cannot log in with that. And the second one was admin, admin, which is my main user. Okay, after logging properly, I will be able to see admin or whatever you want. Like if you want to test like my account or things like that, you will be able to see like here, we are interacting with login. We are interacting like with Drupal itself. Like we are we're doing whatever we want. Uh, and then it's easy to to handle. So, Behats is that simple. Like, as long as you have your file, uh, you have your definition, you know what you can do here using those concepts, you can write whatever you want. And a simple, a simple test that I can do for you that will uh, show how important Behat is. I have some ready tests here in another folder. But it's for the same website. Let's be at examples. Okay. Bean slash be at. Let me just run here. Okay, this test, I have a lot of features. Okay. I'm testing title and footer, as I told you. I have footer validation. I have another feature that performs search. So I'm going to perform a search looking for mink. Uh, and in this case, I don't have mink on the website and should see like your search, you have no results. So he's testing search without results here. I have here a scenario uh, with results, which is if I just fill up PHP and uh, then press submit, I will have like search results with behat and gherkin. So you're going to see uh, answer for um, submit of PHP, bringing me behat and gherkin content, and that's it. And then I have the login that I just submit. So I have five scenarios, uh, 21 steps, things that I, I already like wrote and, and want to test continuously. See how this is important. If I come here, what I'm doing here basically is performing PHP from the search, as I told you. And then I'm checking that I will have two results with Behat and Gherkin, okay? If I come here, just unpublish, for instance, Gherkin. And then we can consider that someone deleted or unpublish a content that should not be unpublished. And then someone just have to validate the website again. Okay, you have a failed test here. All right, so you have everything running. Okay, something was wrong. What was wrong was the search results. Okay, it's, it was expected that we had like behat and gherkin for PHP. I have behat, but I was not able to find gherkin for some reason. Someone deleted the content or someone just unpublished the content. All right, in this case, like behat was, was, was there. I just have to redo my tests. And I can I can face and and, and see exactly what, what is the issue. So that's how Behat is easy to install, to implement, and you can improve that. Let me get back to the presentation.
All right, moving on, Drupal extension. Uh, Drupal extension basically uh, set up test data for you, uh, and then you, you can use like Drush or Drupal API to, to interact with that. You can define team regions and, and test data that appear with them, clear the cache logout, and do the other usual steps for Drupal, and detect and discover steps provided by contributing models and teams. So you can use uh, this installation to interact and have more uh, items over there with Drupal specifically. Actually, they are there. You, you saw already all the, all the glossary over there with a lot of comments for Drupal. So Drupal extension, that's why I want to use it for Drupal. It's really powerful. Uh, you have three different drivers for Drupal extension. You have Blackbox, Drush, and um, Drupal API. And basically what, what they do is uh, working with map regions, create users, create nodes, vocabularies, taxonomy, and run tests site in different servers. And you, you must choose which one you, you want to use and you have some limitations for each one, okay? Uh, Drupal API is the most um, powerful, just doesn't have like, uh, cannot run tests in, in different contexts. Here, example, how you gonna improve to use like Drupal extension. Basically, you have your YAML file. I'm using here black box, and then what I'm, I'm gonna use for black box, region map. What I can do here is define region maps that was defined on the team for Drupal, and then I will be able to interact with this region directly with the, with the text over there. Facing that I'm this region, or there's a text in region footer, for instance, then I can interact with that. Uh, another example, this one is using uh, API. Let me see if I can. Well, let me just describe quickly for you. For you. Uh, here it's basically a scenario that creates a node. Given I'm, I'm logging in as a user with administration role, uh, when I view an article, content with the title of my article, then I should see uh, the, the heading in my articles. And then another scenario that runs Chrome, Another one that create many nodes, so you are interacting with Drupal using Drupal uh, vocabulary here, okay? Created by Gherkin for you and Drupal extension. And that's one important file as well. If I want to improve uh, my B hat, okay, I like it, everything that they give to me, but as I told you, like, I have to uh, map uh, elements and I don't have this functionality. You're gonna have to add your functions, PHP functions here, okay? This is the file, like it's under features, bootstrap feature contents. This file was created when you just initialize Behat. Uh, I can show you in the end here. Basically you have the uh, everything that they are using as the full, and you gotta add your function below public functions here, okay, using the, the Gherkin structure. What is the easiest way if you want to dig into more this, this complex interaction? When you perform your tests on Behat, I show you, but if you select the entire line, you will be able to see uh, how that uh, function works. And if you go to that function, you will see this kind of class. So you can see basically how they are mapping. Create your mapping here, searching for the elements on the page using PHP for that. And then you're gonna have a glossary defined for that. Uh, what's next? Uh, well, Behat, it's really powerful. So you can interact with uh, Symfony, you can add it on continuous integration, you can, there, there are plugins for Jira, after your test you can just create an entry on Jira for you, you can interact with headless browser, with Selenium, with PhantomJS, and your test will automatically open the browser and show for you exactly what is going on in the real time. You can use different drivers for browsers as well, you can get screenshots which is powerful too as well, uh, because we had allow you to use image magic, for instance, to print screen your, your 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 screens and then validate the layout in the end of the day, compare images. So you can just create your 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 tests automated after that, start your your front end validation as well. Uh, we are developing a powerful framework in our company using all those those settings, and it's really powerful. After you set up everything, uh, does everything for you using only one. All right. Uh, what else? This is a real example. Oh, it's really dark. You have four boxes here, but that's fine. A real example that happened in, on the, in a project last year. So we start to implement Behat is that project that I mentioned with you. Uh, before Behat, for one specific smoke test, we were spending like four hours. Uh, we 
more or less three QA uh, resources because it was an e-commerce website. After implement we had, we could do the tests with 20, in 25 minutes using only one resource because everything was, was, was done already. They just have to run and, and validate whatever they need to. Uh, the time spent after uh, someone understood we had, just like I'm showing to you, to create a small tutorial and train your team and to, to the team start to write the tests were more or less five hours. Like we, we had a group of guys, the setup we had, of, co of course, we spent some time defining how we gonna Im implement and teach them we had, but we spent from, from beginning to the end, five hours, after five hours, they, they were started to, to write the tests. What do you mean by a smoke test? It's uh, just a regular test. Uh, it's a, just a term that we use when you implement a new feature. You don't need like to integration tests and things like that. You just need to navigate to the website to see if the main functions are working as expected. In this case, it's a, it was a large e-commerce website. Even for the simple tests like put an item in a basket and things like that, you spend a lot of time. So uh, this is the a minimum test that a specific client requires before we move change to stage. So in this test, we were spending four hours. In this case, we just test in 25 minutes. It's to test the main functions of the website. Uh, the QA resource after that was reduced from three to one. Okay, that was good because we had three good QA resource here working in this website and we need them in other projects. We can get only one resource and the other ones were, was, were released. And of course, like, not only the client, but our or our managers were really satisfied because you can reduce the, the human uh, utilization and of course saving a lot of money. Um, so, final consideration for this item, use Behat. Why? Because it's easy to learn, it's really powerful, you see with two steps we could install and interact and create like test automation pretty quick. It's heavily extensible, like you can interact, as I told you, with all those, those items and create your framework, test framework, and there's no reason to do not use it, okay? You can use any other tool as well, but if you don't have anything, use Behat. It's really friendly with Drupal and, and works really good. Uh, well, that's it. Thank you. Uh, those are the resources if you want to take a dig into more in Behat and Drupal extension. Um, I can share Composer as well, just send me an email if you need something. Uh, but that's it, you need like Composer installer, some required items over there, you, you can have Behat and Drupal extension working for you, it's really powerful too. All right, all right, it's up to you now. Do you have any additional question? Is there a way to um, <coughs> nest scenarios so you can generate report that actually tells you as opposed to unit tests? like overall all these different functionalities are in place for a role and that role passes yeah yeah yeah. you can you can interact with, with php unit you can interact with unit tests you can integrate it with continuous integrated continuous integration and generating customizer reports so yes yeah, so you can you can create those interactions with specific unit tests and also you can uh, create reports customizer reports not only on the uh, terminal as i show you but in the ci for instance in jenkins yeah, we are doing that as well. And then you can, of course, you can match and start to print your results, create a PDF document, and then just uh, netting all, all the items together and, and adding like emails and everything that fail. Also good practice is to generate in the end of your test, if you have an issue, just create a Jira, add a Jira extensor, create a Jira for the team, and automatically you'll be able to, to set whatever you want. That's it. Um, who writes the test? Like, I'm asking this question because I see this. Like, I'm wondering who writes the test on your team. I actually, would, I asked the question myself, and I looked up. There's a Behat UI module, and I found it really fascinating that uh -huh. it's like a Drupal module that gives you a UI where someone who's non-technical could sit there starting to write these tests, That's and then they get exported. And now I'm like, wow, that takes some load off of the developers mm -hmm. thinking about this. And I'm wondering on your teams how that works. Yeah, that, that's a good question. I, I was discussing this, uh, this item with one of our managers this week. Uh, Behat is it's really powerful because of that. Like we have, we have a large um, ecosystem in our company uh, with a lot of developers uh, like evolving, changing roles and things like that. And of course we have a lot of internees uh, coming. So 
B hat is easy to teach for your internees. Uh, the QA team that is not, uh, the, they doesn't have like advanced skills, and even developers. Like uh, the good piece of the B hat is that right now, which is uh, the team that is responsible to write the tests after you have the libraries, is only the QA team. As long as they know what they have to write, they will write the tests and. Some of them have the ability to create contests on PHP as well. So they are creating in feature contests what they want to test in the front end elements and they are testing on behalf after that. But of course, not, not a lot of them can, can do that. But mostly QA team. We have a group uh, that is training uh, them in using our framework that we developed. This framework is using Docker, so it's, it's easy to install and, and, and use. You have some predefined uh, contents to to start to work with that, but after read the documentation or, or have a presentation, which spans like 15 minutes, the QA team starts to, to run and write everything that they need. Usually, uh, interns that are not uh, doing training or are not involved with, with projects because they are new, we just add them on this, this flow and then start to do it, even without having <coughs> understanding of, of, of code. And it's fun, like I was validated with my wife this presentation, my wife is out of IT area. No, he was, he was able to set up and start to act. So he just had some problems with Composer, but after fix Composer problem, it was easy to use. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Can you give some different testing for different environments and environment changes? Yes. Yes, yes. You usually define it on YAML. Uh, the second file, YAML file, you can uh, define contents, different contents, and you saw that I and I just um, let me show you my YAML file over here. Like I have one uh, environment here, I can have different contests here, but I just define different contests with different environments, and then I can define uh, or through my continuous integration, who is the trigger for each environment or I can run directly on the, on the terminal. That's another good point. Like the tester can run uh, by their own uh, using the terminal and the architects can just link what they are building on the continuous integration. What we are doing, for instance, in this framework, the testers are writing something in a Git repository that maps directly to continuous integration and the continuous integration is, is running outside the QA. Like QA team is just building the assets and the continuous integration is validating. At the end of the day, if you have a fail in the testing process, anyone can check, okay, this scenario failed, uh, I can solve it, or the developer can solve it directly, or the tester can, can just validate it, but you don't need only one person to do it. Like it's so are you saying that your QA, QA now my QA team is uh, saving, the way that we structure, my QA team is just have a, a folder which they have to create the features for a specific project. And then the architect just map this folder with continuous integration. The QA team is working just writing the test on the folder that is mapped by the architect. But then at, at the end of the test creation, the continuous integration just run and that the source for the, the features, for instance. The QA team will interact only with this folder and the architect that will link this folder with what they need for, for Jenkins. I mean, there's no law that says a QA version can't be on command line. Yeah. It's not a legal right? No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're using both command, command line to validate what they're building, but when they commit to the repository and it's officially done, the, the continuous integration just use that, all right? Go ahead. The slide that you showed that talked about kind of the time savings on the testing side was really interesting. That's only one. Like there, there, are, there are some with a lot of hours like saving. This yeah. is the only one scenario. So, so, the, so the question is, in order to take advantage of the time savings on the, on the tail end, on the testing side, it seems to me that there's some overhead on the development side to write Gherkin, to write PHP callbacks, et cetera. Can you speak from your experience of what that Yes, was? yes. In this case, uh, it was, uh, we could write 45% of the tests without customizing anything. Just install like Drupal extension and write this, this kind of test, this kind of smoke test. After 45, I had to get some QA that, has, that they are skilled to build the PHP additional functionalities. But in this case, I have one internee that just learned it behead. She was really good in PHP. She just killed it, like create all the, she just mapped all the issues that we were having, what 
were seven issues. Some of them were, were related to IDs or elements on the website that were not mapped, so the behead could not uh, reach that. In this case, we just asked, asked the developers to add ID and we'll fix it. The other uh, items were really uh, into the a lot of levels of div, and then we we have to develop like element map. In this case, we we have to to build a function for that. But this internally just could do that after it spent some time understanding how behead works, and then after that we finish the entire process. So yes, you you can have some blocks if you don't have uh, someone that will understand PHP, but you can start easily until like 50% and move on. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Do you, do you then, have you then taken that work and put it into some sort of an internal, do you abstract that out to something like Drupal extension but for your team? Uh, you, you can do that, yeah, you can so do that. Yeah, yeah, what, what, yeah we, we, we are building something like that. We are building an extension that, uh, which is the setup for our uh, daily work in Drupal 7 and 8, not 6 anymore. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we have an initial setup with a lot of uh, defined and predefined function. Our team already spent this, uh, closed this gap, did everything that they, they, they mapped and just necessary. And we have, just for architects, we have 15 architects working with different Drupal projects. And under these architects, you have more or less like 10 developers, QA team. So it's a huge environment. So we, we have a process to. Uh, a specific repository for, for this framework, and we are adding uh, as long as we judge it's something that can, could be spread. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, as long as you do that, just add on the documentation, it's there. If you just perform being behead DL, you can see everything that is right for you. It can be, can be used for test on mobile, or is there any trick for that? It's, it's for browser, it doesn't matter which browser. So, uh, as I told you, you can use headless browser, you can use a, a real browser. So, as long as you can map the, uh, the item on the web page, you can use it. So, it can be used by mobile. In this, in this one, we were, we were testing mobile. Uh, it, it was a responsive website, so we had to test all the, all the interactions. Yes, it can be used. All right, time's up. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Like, if you have any additional questions, <laughs> just the same email, and we can keep moving over that. All right, thank you. Are you gonna push your slides? I'm sorry. Are you gonna push yeah, your I'm gonna I'm gonna upload the slides. Uh, probably they are, they they will upload uh, the recording as well. And yeah. Right. Hit the, hit the recording button so it stops recording. This one. Yeah.